Hey, I am a revision geek and I want you to come and join my revision geek world. Welcome to the Diaries of a Revision Geek. I cannot wait for you to watch these interviews. They are so super fun. I've got qualified accountants together talking about their revision journeys, the highs, the lows, the struggles, and all the things in between about how other people got their plaque up on the wall and how they got qualified. I've picked qualified accountants in my LinkedIn network on purpose to help and support you guys, to inspire and motivate you if you are on your accounting journey. Feel free to like and subscribe below for more. Just click on the icons and I will keep you up to date with the diaries of a revision geek. Let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to Diaries of a Revision Geek. Another episode for you today, a brand new episode. I have no idea what the revision journey is like, so I can't wait. You're going to learn at the same time as me too, guys. So um, welcome, Joe. Thank you for being here. Hi. Thanks for inviting me, Helen. It's been great getting to know you just now. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. I, like, I feel like I know Joe, and this, this is the first time we've spoken, but I'm very excited. Yes, we've been connected on LinkedIn for a long time. And I'm very excited to learn about your journey as well. So um, if you want to feel free to introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are. Yeah, so I'm Jo Tuffle. I'm an ACCA online tutor, specifically for management accounting and at the moment performance management. It's that nemesis paper, isn't it? So um, I'm actually ACA qualified quite some time ago now. I'm not going to say when. <laughs> But yes, I've had quite a big journey through my career. So I started out in audit um, and then I went progressed into management accounting, which is where my heart is um, for a big supermarket chain in their head office, did budget planning and evaluations, that sort of stuff. And then I diversified into mergers and acquisitions, funnily enough, with Intel. And I was really more a project manager there. So using slightly different skills. And then I went into teaching and that's kind of where I've been since really. So over 15 years now doing teaching, had a bit of a gap when I was, um, was an expat in Germany. And uh, I then went back into industry and did a sort of an IT project financial based thing. But really I've done a lot of training and a lot of teaching throughout my career. Through, even from the early years in audit, I used to train the new, new graduates. So it, you know, it's, it's what I do and what I'm good at, I think. Well, I'm good. So yeah, so um, although I don't necessarily do accounting all throughout all my career, I don't think I've ever um, not done teaching and not done training. So yeah, okay, it's been great. great. So good to have you. I have no idea what your revision journey is like, but even when you say, oh, I'm ACA qualified, but I teach ACCA, I'm like, oh, that's like, I can't wait to ask you some questions. Yeah. But well, um, first off, if, I, if you want to just, talk us through your revision journey, the highs and the lows, and then I'll dive in with some questions as we go through. Yeah. yeah, well, my revision journey, I think, was probably the best it could be, really, because I was supported by my firm. I was supported in a lot of ways. It was paid for, and I know there's a lot of people struggle out there to afford fees for good tuition. And it was also, I was also given time off. So, but the in the days when I did the ACA qualification, I had to do all the exams at once. So that was the downside. So I went on a split intensive course. So I'd do tuition for six weeks for all the exams. You'd go back into work for six weeks and then you'd do revision for six weeks. So it was full time, um, full on, uh, but you had to juggle all those subjects. When so you say, you, when you say all the exams, do you mean like a certain level you had to do? Yeah. You did another level? Yeah. Yeah. So I was exempt from the um, foundation level because I had a relevant degree. So I did economics and accounting at Bristol. And so I did enough um, my degree to get the exemptions from the earlier levels. Although I didn't quite get off scot-free, which I didn't quite realise at the time. 
<laughs> they required me, my firm required me to do a test of accounting competence, which basically was the accounting exams in the foundation level. So the financial accounting and management accounting. I literally had to basically sit them, um, albeit not in the exam room but in the center of my tuition provider center so that that was a bit daunting because I thought I'd just got off got yeah. free <laughs> anyway so that was that was that was fine it, it was okay but you no know, then my part ones and my part twos were the ones where you had to do them all together and you had to pass every single one so if you failed one then you ref you failed the whole lot oh wow the only exception was if you got 49% in one or 48, 49%, you were then allowed to just retake that one. But if you failed one with less than 49, 48, you had to, and so it's quite, quite upsetting. If you failed one, the whole lot went. Mm -hmm. So that was a really tough time. Yeah. But a lot of pressure. Isn't it, it was a lot. Yeah. yeah. And like I was very lucky that I had you know, the support of my um, company um, to, in terms of time off and being sent to a tuition provider. So I think, you know, I possibly would have had the best journey for ACA at that time than some people who were working full time and had to do their studying in the evening and that, you know, go to a tuition provider in the evening. And I think that must have been absolutely tough as, well, yeah, I can't quite believe how tough that must have been, yeah. you know. And I don't know if it was lucky that like but it, but you had that level which worked for you yeah yeah it worked for you mm. and um so did you pass all your exams first time yes I did yeah yeah um I'm proud to say my P1 I got a prize in the, um, the West <laughs> of England prize so I didn't get top slot but I think I, I think from memory it came something like six or something and that was great but I did come up a bit of a scupper in my in my part twos and that's probably what I kind of can focus on there was one subject I just didn't get <laughs> just spent I just in my head I kept thinking I'll be okay I'll be okay you know I don't really need to practice those questions you know I don't really need to. it's understandable <laughs> On the day, it's just scenarios, and all I need to do is just apply myself. So there's no revision needed. Okay. Oh, I sat through that exam thinking I'm on the cusp here. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally was, I came out with something like 52%. Uh, yes. So I can't remember. It was not, it wasn't, it wasn't my finest hour, shall we say. <laughs> That's that's interesting though. Oh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then that was part two, and that was it, was it? Or was there any more? Yeah, yeah. So um they'd introduced a case study. So I was the first um first to sit the case study. And so that was part of our part two. So that wasn't a nice experience because nobody really felt they knew what was going on because it was yeah. the first time. It's like when anything changes because the ACC are changing option papers at the moment to have professional marks. Now, I think that's a really positive thing, very positive for them. But the case study was just like, oh, this, we have no idea what we're doing. There wasn't any pre-work handed yeah. out like they are in SEMA. It, you just it literally arrived and it was a four hour and it could have been on any part of the um, part two syllabus. So your tax, your audit, your FR or, or your business planning paper. So it was quite, it was quite a worry because if you got something you didn't like, you're not necessarily going to pass, were you? But anyway, so yes, um, it was a good, you know, it was a big relief once the exams were done. I just remember feeling total relief, yeah, total euphoria. I think I was just quite couldn't quite believe how hard it was, so hard, you know. How long did it take you from start to finish? So because I was a relevant graduate, as we call it, and I had, didn't have to do the first time, I literally did do it in two years, the exam. So so my part one's in the, my first year of my training contract and then my part two is my second. And then I had to wait another year to get the experience on my, C, you know, my CV, um, you know, professional experience requirement to then submit for my my letters. So, um, so it did take three years ultimately, but the exams took two. Okay. 
And that's speed. That is speedy, though. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's because you have to do them all together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's all or nothing, isn't it? That is. That is. I, 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 my my opinion on that right now. I'm glad it isn't like that anymore. Oh, I totally agree. I think um, I think you're only basically letting people through who um, really. I mean, I'm not saying you can't get through by doing night school, or whatever. But but you're not you're not giving them the best. You know, everybody the best chance. So your your people are capable. They just they just might be time short. You know, yeah. or can't do exams very well. A lot of my students do yeah. come to me who are resitters who just do find writing an exam difficult. And if you have some, it's a skill, right? Writing an exam successfully, a CMO or an ACCA one or an ACA one. And we don't all have that skill, but, can, but you have to have that skill to be able to pass mm. those exams as well as obviously a technical skill. Whereas now I just feel like with, with more exams over a longer period or less intense period, it's like yeah. you get to learn the knowledge and being able to pass and ex learn exam techniques as well. Well, I mean, the other thing is the quicker you learn something the less you're going to retain of it so something like um having taking longer over something and uh, uh, in depth it's going to be retained in your in your head a lot longer than if you do this short intensive study um it's one of my big bugbears don't leave it in the exam room <laughs> I just, yeah. why have you just got spent all this time and effort studying this and then students come to me and they're doing the next level up and they don't remember any of it. Then no. they've only done it last year. So and I'm like, for the exam, right? No, to be a, a strong qualified accountant, it is about retaining it. Yeah. Don't leave it. In the, life. Yeah. yeah. Don't leave it in the exam room because I have used uh, pro pretty much most of the things that I learned um, in my um, ACA. I, I, even though I didn't know I was going to, um, because I was an audit, I was in audit. Um, a lot of the stuff from the management accounting syllabus, which I wasn't doing at all, was I in my job? I then got a job outside of audit, and and I used it. And I went, oh, I've done this. Yeah, done this. Ah, yeah. this is this is good. This is yeah. like it made me feel great. And if I hadn't remembered any of that, and I'm, I'm lucky, I've got one of those sorts of brains. But you know, it doesn't take much to retain it and a lot of students don't want to retain it oh I've had enough of that I'm never going to do it again but yeah. they, they're, they're they're being taught to you these skills are being taught to you for a reason mm -hmm. and if you want to become an all-rounded accountant that you that sounds knowledgeable and is able to apply those skills then don't leave it in the exam room totally agree yeah like honestly it is about being an all-round accountant these mm -hmm. ICCA and SEMA mm -hmm. um Oh, all round, you know, so that you just have this yeah. standard. And some of my guests on the interviews have said how it's like a passport. And you can travel the accounting world or, or anything with this passport once you've got it. Yeah. But you need to know how to apply it and use it, right? You can't just travel yeah. to this place and, like, I don't know what I'm doing. You do know what you're doing once you've retained the information and learnt it in your head in a yeah. way. Smart. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, um, focus on your your ACA journey again. Still, um, what would you say were your um, highs and your lows going through your journey? Well, my highs were definitely um, the one you know I'd sit in my um, tuition. I mean, I absolutely loved going to college. I absolutely loved it. I was the one who was sat at the front, <laughs> asking all the questions. I would. I'd be so keen on, you know, getting home, getting the question practice done and it would all be done and dusted. So those were my real highs. I loved being at college. I also loved seeing my name at the top of the, they used to post your results of your exams, your little mocks and stuff. And I used to always be at the top, really excited about the fact that I was at the top and smugging, smugly to myself thinking, well, if you're not going to practice your questions, then you won't get to the top of the tree, will you? <laughs> so I'm I was not very liked in my class. <laughs> so a bit, the bit of the low though, and, I, and this is where I did get egg on my face and, and I thought I deserved that, was when I, you know, one paper I told you I wasn't into, didn't want to practice. <laughs> um I became I got into sort of like something like the third quartile in the class and everybody 
honestly, they posted the results up. This is proves to you they were fed up with me. They posted the results up and everybody cheered. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a new name at the leaderboard <laughs> everybody cheered and I just thought oh dear that's so funny so and then it and it it, it, it was so it was so, it was such a big thing that it all went around the office <laughs> <laughs> so yeah in terms of a low a real low I think it was trying to trying to juggle my time trying to know that was it I used to find it quite difficult to know how long to spend on each subject if you're doing I was doing four or five you know I've got this immense immense amount of time and I need to make sure I plan it and schedule it properly and so I found that quite that was a bit of a low for me because I didn't want to study some of these subjects I wanted to do oh I want to do all the calculations and I don't want to write you know I can't that takes too long and I think I, um, I think I, I needed to be strict with myself and say, no, you, you can't, you got, you know, you've got to focus on those subjects you don't like. And so in the end, I did do, I did do a quite a detailed plan of how many hours I was going to spend on each subject. Um, I was just and, about to ask you that actually. Yeah, yeah. Did you use a revision plan. Yeah, definitely. If if you not if you've not got a revision plan, I, you're sorry. I think you're planning to fail really. Because you have to plan to cover everything. Now you may you may not cover some things as well because you don't like those topics, but you can you can pretty much see um, where you failed then if you have got that plan and you didn't stick to it. Yeah. You? Especially if it's one of those areas which is a high weighting of your syllabus as well, just because you're rubbish at it or we co at it in your head, you think that doesn't mean you shouldn't plan it in and do some questions on it. Yeah, and I think. I think I think that that was my low, wasn't it? Because that subject I didn't like. I just kept not planning it in, and I hadn't. I didn't do that with my first lot, and I think um, I just had my head in the sand a bit, and I know I nearly became unstuck. And I, so I do tell that story quite a lot to people who you know. But I don't like the written bits, and I said, well, neither did I. I don't like the, I don't like the subjects where the answer isn't correct because it's a version of the answer you know so something like SBL in ACCA it it's a version of the answer it's not necessarily it's just a model answer and it's lots of ideas that you could have put together but your idea because equally have been marked right as well and I think I think that's where students really struggle and I think that is those subjects is where you really need a tutor to mark your work for you because it's all because it's very difficult to allocate yourself marks if it's not in the model answer, isn't it? Yeah, and give yourself a level of confidence in your exam technique, in your written answer, and the mm -hmm. fact that you can write a sentence. Just because it's not the model answer doesn't mean it's not right. You have to no. have confidence in yourself as well as you can't rely on a tutor marking it and giving you confidence yourself. There's a balance to that area as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there is, I mean, it's good to have a, a study buddy as well. So again, I think that's where I would say that I didn't have a study buddy. And I think a lot of people um, um, who went after me, because I, in my year group, I was probably one of the first to go through the exams because I was a relevant graduate. And there was only one other person who was. So so we 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 didn't really we weren't study buddies because it we didn't really work for us. But uh, people who had became quite friendly in their groups, they became stud and it really helped them because they'd look at each other's answers and say, mm, I can't understand that. What have you done there? You yeah. know, and I think that's yeah. a really good thing, isn't it? So I think in a ter in terms of my going back and thinking about what I would have had done again. Right. I think I would have tried to have had a study buddy, at least met up with somebody once a week to go through things. Yeah, Especially I, I that topic. think if I had to look back and say, what would I have done differently? One, I know I say this all the time, I would have done a lot more marks and a lot more question practice personally. And a study buddy to just to be, I feel like a study buddy in quali a qualifying accountant. It's not just a random, it's a, somebody who's got some expert knowledge mm. um, and knows at least the level of, oh, that is right or not right, not just... Yeah your friend or your partner or something who would have no clue if it's right or not and um, so it would be a bit too critical maybe as well yeah, but, yeah no you know my ex-husband was very critical like well you've written that wrong like no but you don't know 
just like that version yeah, of yeah, that. yeah 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 no. I think you almost need somebody who's going through the journey with you so the ones who have always been successful on courses that I've I've seen them working together in the classroom and then when we moved online for COVID I saw them working together um meeting up over zoom and helping each other and it was it is a really um and it's kind of a motivator as well and um, keeps you motivated and yeah, come on, we're going to do this right together yeah. and we'll get there. There's always going to be one who's slightly stronger than the other, but they might switch when it comes to different subjects. Yeah. Oh, they absolutely will. Yeah, for sure. And just the accountability of, oh, I've got a call next Wednesday, so I'll do this on Monday and Tuesday and make sure I come to the call. That's what I would be like. I would want to be that, like I was at the front of the class too, but I was the one struggling at the front of the class sometimes. But mm. um, I would like, I do it because I'm accountable to the next appointment or meeting or class and things like that. Yeah, mm. it would just make me do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I kind of think, you know, as I said before, my time again would be definitely make sure you plan in the harder subjects love the subjects you hate in other words give them more time because um they're yeah. probably where you're going to fail it's, but i mean i teach peak performance management at the moment and there's just there's so there's definitely some nemesis topics that people just can't don't like transfer pricing they don't like not-for-profit questions and they just try and avoid them and as you can't avoid anything no. Not and in, not in that yeah so I've got this term which is <laughs> which actually comes from financial management you've got to treat it like a future and a future in financial management is um you're basically betting to lose right you're betting to lose because so by revising the subjects you hate if they come up which is, means you've lost you are um you're ready for them but if they don't come up you've won so either way it's an it's an easy win-win isn't it so you've got to bet to lose so I um it's one thing I say to the, all my students once they start revision stop focusing on the things you like only focus yeah you know sure. you've got to you know you've got to look you've got to tackle those subjects because I don't know what's coming up in your exam yeah, yeah. and especially um, at the level at the applied skills level everything could come up oh yeah everything yeah and it does in PM. <laughs> and I mean, it sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it does though. So I've interviewed a variety of people, students and qualified accountants who are working and tutors like you and yourself and some others. And my overriding like feeling it was just how much energy you can give students, like as a tutor now, you like because you've gone through the journey and now looking back, you know, and like you said, with your training, teaching background, like the support that you can give a qualifying accountant, but you've been, you're an expert yourself, you're an experienced expert, is that um, we talk, we can talk about support, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but just more that like, I know what you, I know how you can learn this topic, you know? And um, without spoon feeding them, but just giving you the, those little tricks like the future and like, oh, this is how you do it. So if you are watching this, guys, watch thinking I have to do it on my own, I have to self-study. Oh, my God. Like you don't have to. Like I just don't think self-study is for everybody. And even if it's just a sp syllabus specific paper like Joe does, it's worth investing in yourself and a tutor if you can like um there's a variety of options investment options out there um and it might just be a revision course with one or it might just be um the study course with for something because it will give you the, the steps up and the hand holding that you need in, a, in an expert way that's what my overriding thing yeah is. i think if you do one course with an expert tutor or, or, or supportive tutor then you realize what um you realize how much help you've you've actually got i mean not everybody can teach themselves a topic i mean it it's not easy and actually you can often teach yourself the wrong way because you can yeah, you, you yeah. haven't quite got what that meant and i mean i know that because when i when i've learned my had to learn new topics myself and teach myself new topics to teach other people it's only sometimes <laughs> like the third time through you suddenly realize oh yeah. I've not been realizing that and then the penny drops so you know and you need to know that's 
first off, don't you really, to pass the exam. <laughs> so you do need somebody to guide you, definitely. And that guide is a quicker, more efficient solution. And then you know you're learning it correctly as well for this long-term learning. Mm -hmm. You're not just learning it for that exam day. Just yeah. you have to, because you might get asked on it. Well, you're not... If you ask Mr. Simmer and Mr. ACCA, they're teaching it for the long term, not just for that day on like the 1st of July or whatever it is. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, so good. So I would say like, um, why, why did you, what motivational factors did you have for you to keep going? Obviously, you put, there was a lot of pressure. Obviously, you had some support, a lot of support from your job, which you said, but what was your personal motivational factors for doing this? Um, my personal, I think it was basically wanting to get on with a career and I needed those letters to get that career. I was really, um, you know, I was really excited to be qualified, uh, you know, because once you were qualified, you were able to then apply for different types of jobs. And I knew I didn't want to stay in audit. And so my motivation was the fact that I knew it was a definite career path. I knew you could potentially get to travel. I like the idea of signing passports. <laughs> uh, and obviously, I know it's a great salary. Uh, those were the kind of the, the my motivations. And it was like I wanted to get on and have a career in finance. And um, and unless you got qualified, you don't even you, you, you can't really move out of what you're doing. There's all there's always something in your way, isn't it? And um, so the qualification was the first motivation for me because I knew my career wasn't really going to start properly until I was qualified and then and the, I think and then the motive what were the motivational things for you like maybe on a weekly or monthly basis to actually get through the exams and just be motivated to sit down or go to college that day or on a weekly basis well I'm quite I'm, I, I'm, I'm quite a self-motivated person Dare I say it, I'm quite competitive. So I think my motivation was wanting to be, wanting to be the best I could be. I'd, I've or I'd, I'd had quite a terrible time when I did um, my, um, I'm going to call them O levels, which will so show my. Um, I had a terrible time when I did my O levels. I had a, um, wasn't very well, and um, I didn't do as well as I wanted to be. It, it was, it was. It was partly, I think it was partly stress. And um, I don't think I'd been taught as well as I wanted to be taught. I knew that I had gaps in my knowledge. And so in my head, as a competitive person, I knew I wasn't able to do as well in them as I should have been. And um, I think that was partly the fault of the not being taught the whole syllabus for some subjects. But that then manifested itself internally and I got quite stressed. So my results went as great. And I thought I'd ever want that to happen again. And I'm never going to let that happen again. And I was so ever since then, I, my motivation was sheer determination. I've never want to feel that way ever again. And, and so I would never not go to college. I would never not do the homework. Honestly, I was honestly, I was such a girly swat. <laughs> but I mean if that's if that's how to become successful and then that's what I need to tell my students and I need to tell them you know it's okay to have an off week and you know you're tired or whatever but ultimately you'll get out what you put in and if you put the effort in you will be successful yeah we know it's a commitment guys this is why we're like here helping and supporting you on a daily basis LinkedIn, mm. we've got um a coaching that we can help you with coaching to yeah. but like it is a commitment and you have to make it I mean you don't have to make it but you're choosing to make it that's why you're here yeah you know, in your journey and um, but it is a commitment yeah it, it makes yeah it, the more you put in does make a difference it like, does make a difference and I, I'm not I'm 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 slightly worried that I'm not giving people something, you know, I had a really bad struggle. Now, I did have a really bad struggle in my, you know, my O-levels. And it was an absolute awful experience for me. And I feel that, you know, my motivation was to not ever feel like that again. And of course, my motivation was also to, just to, to get through my exams that, to the best of my ability and to get the, the marks that I wanted. But um, equally, passing them all 
would have just been good enough, quite frankly, <laughs> which it was in the end. But, you know, I think it was such a great feeling to get to the end and get them done, get the letters after your name and know that I could kickstart. If I'd have done any, the other thing is if I'd have failed any, there's, there was a potential of losing your job. So, yeah, which is not nice. Um, an extra, um, another extra pressure one but I've obviously yeah. that positively motivated you these um, yeah I, I I think um I think the reality was that you know if if you'd failed things a few times then the job would have gone but I don't think it would have gone the first time so because they understand as long as you've tried your best and they just don't they would understand that you know there's other pressures out there but um yeah I just think um you give it as much as you can it may not have been as much as I could have given because I was sponsored and I had time off but that's why there's no longer this silly thing where you've got to pass all four at the same time that's why the modular thing came in mm -hmm. and if you don't have enough time to take one exam in your life then don't do it for that sitting you know you have to make sure you're not going on holiday yes you know you have I'm sorry I know and people do need to help but make sure you pick the holiday at the right time don't pick the holiday in revision revision time do a holiday in tuition time or straight after the exam while you're waiting for your results or something or just or the commitment might be for you and your family and your personal situations for two to three years no holidays the commitment is yeah your ACCA like yeah. and that's some people good. haven't yeah. some people do commit that there's some people who want to get it all done in um, 18 months flat you know they're doing two exams a sitting and they're not going on holiday and they're not you know and they're, they're honestly awful but working every weekend for 18 yeah. months and maybe that's what they wanted but if you don't want that plan that in properly so that you're not failing an exam uh, because of time yes and um you're and the, you know yeah and on the opposite of that so i heard you speak to some students um the opposite of that is this journey should not actually take you 10 years it shouldn't doesn't have to take you 10 plus years guys like mm. it's a procrastination level that we, i want to rein you back in on because it's important that you you don't have to rush through like i think i think a three to five year journey gives you a balance but gives you that big commitment so that you get it done like i don't we don't want this black cloud hanging over you we don't want you i don't want you to be like oh i've been studying for nine years well let's get that changed let's get that sorted let's get those three exams done and get your plaque done then you can go on holiday you can get this pay rise you can have all of these amazing rewards yeah. that we can talk to you about for hours and hours um but yeah so it doesn't it can be an 18 month journey it can be a three or five year and then because it's a balance but yeah there's a commitment <laughs> to take and if you don't like we said like if you don't have a plan I don't think you can stick to a weekly or a monthly schedule to get it done either no yeah so I mean when students commit to doing um the three month you know plan to get from one sitting to the next for ACCA I do say to them at the beginning you know Oh, when are you have you got any holidays you know let's you know we're going to need to plan around that and some people have even said to me well I'm getting married um a week you know two weeks before and then I'm going on a honeymoon but I think I can get all the work done before the marriage and I don't do an exam if you're going to get married no mm -hmm. enjoy your enjoy yeah. your three months mm -hmm. planning your wedding have a lovely wedding have a lovely holiday just move your exam three months please you, you I don't you're just not going to have a lovely journey and you're not going to have a nice relaxing honeymoon yeah one of the reasons <laughs> why I wanted to speak to so many people about their journeys is to show my audience that everybody's journey is different as you can I think it's, you know I've recorded nearly 20 episodes that you can go and watch back if you want but um everybody's journey is different some of like 10 years some of two years um and there's a variety in between for sure I just want you to be inspired and motivated by like everyone's journey is different yeah um if you want to get your plaque you absolutely can we, mm. we believe you should plan yeah. in yeah. support out there to have some help and support on a weekly yeah. basis yeah. but yeah you don't but it's yeah really so if you're a young if you're a young um student with no ties you know you're not married you don't have a family yet or whatever and 
and you're and you're basically got your you you got a lots of time the only time that you it you know you've got to fit in your fitness whatever and your job but yeah by all means you can focus and do that you know get it done in two to three years but if you're not and you've got a full-time job you've got family then you need to plan it in a slightly different way yeah and that's why there's a lot of variety to do that right now I, I, I focus a lot on a lot of my students um, are researchers and a lot of my students are, are of an older plus 30s who have the family who have the commitments who have lots of juggles that they need to juggle and balance and that's where I know I can help and handhold them and give them a bespoke plan that mm. works with their life now to to still get the same result though we want I want your plaque up on the wall guys yeah. you know yeah I know I think I think that's so valuable and really really um I know I do hear a lot of people who are just don't have just short on time and some are getting up you know four in the morning to study and then some of my stu some students have um um for religious reasons they're going through ramadan and things like and that and that's really hard to be studying during the fasting period so that you know you have to tweak their plan and i, I often do say to them are you sure you want to study at this time and no 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 i'm fine i'm used to it because they are used to it and actually you know and then we just say well how how are you going to study how are you going to take care of yourself and well this is what I'm going to do and and then I'm happier to take them on because I don't want to I don't want to set my students up to fail because they're time short do you know what I'm saying or they're yeah. they're going through something else in their life at the moment and yeah. yeah oh so good it's so good to chat to you I'm enjoying listening about your journey so um I'm just going to ask you the questions that I'm asking everybody because I think it's just a really way, a good, interesting way for us to be inspired, inspire others, and motivate the audience. So, um, when when you first started, what opportunities did you think would come from being a qualified accountant? Obviously, you've talked us through some of those. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the main opportunity that I kind of saw was traveling. I really wanted to, you know, I got told, you know, especially with the firm that I was in, I was with a big audit firm. I thought, you know, once I got qualified, I might get to travel with the audit firm. Um, but actually, I didn't get to travel with the audit firm. It came back that I, because I was qualified and I moved into a different um, management accounting I then moved into Intel and it was with Intel that I got to travel with because they're an American company and so they sent me over to the US to do training and things so I got to travel there I got to travel to Europe because I was integrating companies from a financial integration point of view oh. into the Intel umbrella so that's how I got to travel so that was great and even actually with Summerfield um, even though it was UK based I was traveling up to um, set the budgets up because they took over QuickSave. And so I was home to travel up to North Wales to that head office. And I did a lot, you know, and obviously go to various stores around, you know, training and, and sort of helping and stuff. So it, it really is something that you can travel with because everybody needs an accountant. <laughs> they need a finance break. And yeah. then when I finally um, went to Germany as an expat and I was like, traveling with my husband for his job I didn't have a job but I um, I got approached by an American on the playground <laughs> <laughs> that were looking for trained accountants in um, for Ecolab which is an American company and they were in Europe and they were putting in a new finance system we're looking for trained accountants would you do you think you applying I went oh my goodness I'm even going to get a job in Germany <laughs> yeah so, I mean it is it's it's a because you're but, qualified I would say yeah, it's because I'm qualified yeah, I know that there's a lot of discussion about QBE but my personal professional opinion is that you have more opportunities when you're qualified when you have the plaque and it's just you've opened up so much more and it's easier it's I would not have got any of those jobs without being qualified you're just not taken seriously yeah and I just think um, definitely the Ecolab one, I mean, that just, don't, you know, finance is a business language, isn't it, effectively, of the world. You know, it, you know I, I was working in Germany in German, English, Dinglish, as I called it, but I was doing both. And um, but because it was numbers, I could do it, couldn't I? You know, and they knew you could do it because you have letters after your name. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was just yeah. the standard yeah. boom. 
Yeah. Uh, and then people don't ask you what your exam marks were or anything. It's no, just, of course they don't. Got letters after my name. I know, I do I've, I've only admitted know. to you what my exam yeah. was. <laughs> and the whole of my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, damn. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. yeah, no, and I think I think um, I so I basically as the young person I was, it was Korea getting kick-started, wanted, be, wanted a big career, wanted to do well, uh, wanted a good salary, and above all, I wanted to travel. Because I'd travelled before I went to this audit firm. You know, I'd done a year out after university, and I just had the biggest travel bug ever, and I just love, I just love going new places. Yeah. And uh, I mean, so, yes, yeah. yeah. And, I th- and I think afterwards, um, the opportunities, you know, I didn't realise actually at the time when I was thinking oh well that's you know these are the things I'm going to do but afterwards I didn't realize you know that um it was easier than I thought to be much more flexible the job is much more flexible than I thought so I have I mean I've worked part-time I've not stayed in audit I've moved into management accounting I've moved into operations effectively within some field I've done um, mergers and acquisitions I've done project management teaching training IT I mean it's not just working as a bookkeeper is it if you don't want it to be no and the the levels of finance once you can get to a certain level um stay on that level guys as well but yeah but there's options within that level yeah yeah definitely I mean it's just um I just I'm always trying to sell people doing the finance qualification because even if you say, oh, I don't want to be an accountant. I mean, I did say that to my mum. My mum said to me, <laughs> why don't you want to be an accountant? That's what you're good at numbers. You're good at that. You did it. And because when I was doing an economics degree, um, I just tagged on the accounting just for a bit of fun. I didn't really look into it. <laughs> I just thought, oh, well, that sounds like, sounds kind of vocationally economics and accounting. So I'll do it. But it really, I wanted to do economics. So, and I thought, oh, I'll do and so the accounting bit at university wasn't as interesting as I wanted it to be. So, I, of course, I didn't want to be an accountant afterwards. And she kept saying, why don't you want to be an accountant? And she just kept going on and on and on at me. <laughs> and I eventually <laughs> succumbed. I eventually succumbed because I wanted to go travelling. So I'm going to admit this. I wanted to go travelling. I ideally wanted to be in sales and marketing. And I didn't get any roles in sales and marketing. And I wanted to go traveling. And my dad said to me, well, you can't go traveling until you've got a job to come back to. <laughs> so I, so that was when I applied to the audit firms and uh, got a job. <laughs> so I could go traveling. Job for life. I know. And I actually, you know what? Once I was there and doing it, I was happy. And then my mum was right. So I'll let her have that one. <laughs> thanks, mum. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mum cool oh great so the last question i'm asking um, i give a lot of revision tips on linkedin um, i love giving tips uh, because they're implementable short sharp confidence boosting things so i'd love to know what your number one tip is for any qualifying accountants listening well so i've already said them to be honest but my number one tip for revising is bet to lose yeah, make sure you cover all those topics, even the ones you hate, because I nearly came unstuck, didn't I? Yeah, and and that's probably the most important thing when revising, stop going over the stuff you like. Stop doing those calculating things and force yourself, force yourself to do the writing. Um, and within that, I think don't all, don't look at that answer. Do the question without the answer once you're in revision, definitely, um, because you won't have the answer in the exam. And you, that you, I, I used to do that all the time. I used to always look at the answer. You look at the answer. Like, oh, it's just too that's tempting. To do, yeah. That's why it's great to have a course um, where you're given questions like homework questions, which is why I do, um, where you don't give them the answer and they have to do it. They have to do it. Yeah mean we have to do mean. learn from it but yeah yeah, yeah. The answers, no, we don't so need. yeah i've kind of combined the two so bet to lose do the subjects you hate and don't look at answers really force yourself to do them without the answer because it'll pay dividends in the exam you'll feel the stress yeah. oh yeah in a safe environment yes Perfect. and then when you're in the exam room and you feel that stress like i did in my o levels yeah. you're you're not you you you'll cope with it yeah, yeah, you, you cope with it. Com- 
as yeah. you how and you'll be like oh I've seen this before yeah that's what yeah. the vision and practice is for yeah because oh. yeah. let's say um, it's like with mocks people think it's the test it's not the test it's learning it's still learning and it's a safe environment to learning and you can feel all that stress and all that pain and all that, oh, I don't know what I'm doing and then funnily enough when it gets marked you potentially have passed and you'll be like oh so when my students come out with the real exams now and they do that to me they go oh it was terrible they said you did that in the mock you did that in the mock yeah right you did that in the mock and you said exactly the same to me and then you got a pass and you couldn't believe it so let's not worry right now yeah let's not worry right now or even if you didn't pass your mark that's not the end of the world either you did learn you learned yeah 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 I know but I'm just pointing out that you know they do this and yeah. then I think um if you're saying for qualifying accountants listening not necessarily a revision tip um my one is don't leave it in the exam room please keep that knowledge because you're going to use it I've used it all all of it all of it in different ways you know yeah, doing my own tax you. return you yeah. know you know understanding the implications of setting up a company which I did you know all those things you know auditing I've done audits for people you know free of charge but you know knowing how to audit and knowing and understanding risk and all that it's all going to be used yeah it will be used for more than you think as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much for letting me interview you, Joe. It's yeah, no, thank you. you. Yeah, no, thank you. It's been lovely. Lovely to meet you properly. And um, it's been interesting having a sort of a chat about things because it's great. It's great to hear, um, you know, what you do, um, coaching and helping students through their revision because, you know, yeah, ultimately, it's something I probably needed when I was doing my O levels, and 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 you know everybody feels some stress in life, and if it's about managing that stress and coping with it and channeling it. Yeah. And um and if you felt stress like that and you've unfortunately haven't passed an exam because of it, then you're going to probably need some sort of help and direction to channel that stress in the positive way rather than the negative way. Yeah, and I'm a qualified accountant. That's why I only coach CMA and ACCS students right now because I've got the experience and the expertise. I don't coach anyone. I only coach CMA and ACCS students on purpose to give you that confidence because I know exactly, exactly what you're going through, guys. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So it's great to interview Joe. If anybody wants to get in touch with you or are sitting their PM exam, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, well, the best way to do it is to um, you can Google um, ACCA PM tutor and I come up. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> you, or, or you can go through um, joetuffle.co.uk, which is my website. Um, I will my WhatsApp. You can maybe pop it on the um on the video so um my whatsapp numbers just happy to receive whatsapps from people who want some advice etc uh, and find out what i do um but my youtube channel has quite a lot on there quite a lot of content so you find out all about me and it's joe tuffle online tutor i'll link i'll put that in the link in the comments and stuff as well yeah. but thank you so much it's been great no. to interview you <laughs> yeah thank you for having me Thank you.